Welcome to Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, the podcast where nostalgia comes alive. Since July of 2021, Jake and his friends have interviewed professionals in the worlds of acting, directing, writing, puppeteering, and many more. Who will they be chatting with in this week's interview? Find out in this Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show episode. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show, where nostalgia comes alive. I'm your host, Jake Duffenbar. With me today, as always, our co-hosts, Chris Bixby and Matt Bingo with his pal, Moi Monster. How you guys doing? We're good. Great. Doing good, Jakey. How you doing? Doing great. Thank you for asking. Yeah, and good. Who, who do we have do we today? Have? Well, today's guest we have for today, he's... Of course, he's a great friend of ours, and he's a puppeteer who has performed in multiple Jim Henson Company productions, including Frog Walk by Two Rock, some Splash and Bubbles, which we can talk about those in a bit. He's also a production assistant in the animation industry, which we also can talk about that as well. Here he is, a great friend of ours. Here he is, Mr. Dan Garza. Happy to have you here, Dan. How are you? Hey, how are y'all? I'm doing very good. good. Thank doing you. Good. Thank you. Right, by, the, good. by the way, Jakey, quick correction. That's Emmy Award winning. Frog Rock. That's <laughs> correct. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, that as well. And yeah, it's been it's been a bit for, for making this happen. There you go. Here we go. We were, we're finally able to make it to happen. So thank you for making us finally make this. I think Dan and so. Well, thanks on. for thanks for having me. It's great. I'm glad we could finally make it work. Yes, yeah. yes, of course. of course. Yes, yes. So um, to kick things off, we know who you are, but for those who don't, would you care to introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a human person uh, who happens to move his hand and make funny noises. So, um, yeah, I'm a performer, a voiceover uh, actor, a, uh, a puppeteer, uh, illustrator, writer, director, all that jazz. Uh, so I've been fortunate enough to work uh, with and for uh, the Jim Henson Company, the Walt Disney Company, Nickelodeon Animation Studios, uh, among other like uh, smaller places as well. So uh, it's uh, yeah, I, um, I've been been in the industry for for uh, as long as I had hair, and uh, I'm uh, I'm very very um, uh, privileged to do the things that we get to do. So of course, yeah, that's, that's who I am. yeah, definitely that's awesome. Wonderful. So what was your background like and how did you grow up? Well, uh, I grew up a, a Latino kid in uh, in Texas uh, originally and um, learned to draw from the Sunday comics and oh, wow. uh, took that and ran with it. Uh, I uh, was always doing funny voices. Uh, I, I, one birthday, I got a, a little... Uh, uh, a, a tape recorder back in the day because we didn't have uh, VCRs and stuff like this back in the Stone Ages, and uh, so I would record. We'd watch the Muppet Show live. I mean, well, it was not live, but I mean, it was uh, when, when it was on the air. Uh, and uh, new episodes, fresh episodes. This is back in the what seventies uh, and eighties, I guess. And um, I would record it with my with my voice recorder. And I'd put it right up to the to the TV, and uh, and later on I would listen to it, and I would uh, play back and um, just listen and listen and and rewatch the show in my head, and I loved it. And and one day my uh, my third grade class my third grade class went on a field trip to uh, to a museum, and in this museum they didn't tell us what it was. Uh, it was the Witty Museum in San Antonio, and um, we walk in, and to the left, I remember this clear as day, were these giant glass cases with all of my little TV friends. So it was it was Bert and Ernie and Cookie Monster and Big Bird and uh, Kermit and Fozzie and like so it was this traveling show, and I'll have you know. <clears throat> that San Antonio was the one place that, that a crime happened. Um, a 14 foot tall Kermit the Frog that was on display outside of the Witty Museum was stolen. Someone stole the frog. I can only imagine that it was Doc Hopper, uh, but that's my own uh, uh, thoughts on it. Um, and it was, it was crazy town. Uh, but 
I remember seeing these these characters, and I remember looking so close at them, and I could see the stitches, the stitch work, and they weren't moving. And I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't an idiot, but it was, you know, some of the magic is in is in the puppets. And I knew, oh man, this is this is somebody's job. This is somebody's gig. That is what they do. And um, and I fell in love with the idea of it. And so the the older that I grew and the more interest that developed, um, but it, it, I was always stopped by that that glass. And it wasn't until it wasn't until I was at working for the Walt Disney Company that uh, there was this this merger and they brought uh, they brought the Muppets to to our division of the company. The Muppets had been part of uh, uh, Disney since I believe it was 1990, and uh, so they brought them to our particular division. And um, they had them basically in a room with us. And it was, it was you know, they had uh, newer Muppets as well. They had Walter there and, uh, and a couple other critters. And uh, at the end of the thing, and I stuck around because I didn't want to leave. At the end of the thing, I said, uh, I said Is it, would it be okay if I were to touch, you know, Kermit's belly with like the back of my hand? Because I knew the front of the hand has oils and stuff like that. And the lady says, we really, we, we don't do that, but, and there was nobody else in the room. And I touched Kermit's stomach for the first time ever. And it was, I could hear the glass cases from that third grade field trip shattering. And it like felt, it felt so cool. Um, and, and then uh, while I was working for, for the Disney company, uh, there was a Facebook posting for uh for uh, henson training puppeteers and uh it's part of a diversity workshop and uh, a friend of mine said oh you do all those stupid voices why don't you why don't you do that and i said no 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 and and, and then there was this voice in the back of my head that was like just do it just do it and <laughs> i said well what what am i going to lose you know i'll lose some time and maybe maybe the idea that i'm that i'm good enough my my background background is that of stage. So I, I uh, was a writer and director for, for children's theater uh, for many years and, uh, but gave it up and I went into animation, did all these other things. Um, and I started off uh, as, as a, uh, as a, as a production assistant at Nickelodeon, then worked my way up uh, through Disney as a coordinator, associate producer, producer, and then a manager uh, by the time that I ended up leaving and me and like 500 other people, sent in their stuff and uh they they chose 105 of us to audition and then they chose 30 of us to teach and my my instructors were you know kevin clash and uh alan troutman and uh, donna kimball and uh, drew massey so uh it was wow. it was a cream of the crop like like some of the best puppeteers in in the, in the henson repertoire and um and then, uh, you know, we, we did that for about three months. And then I went back to my job. And then I got a phone call out of the blue saying, hey, we saw your stuff. We think you're funny uh, and, and diverse as far as your, you know, the range of, of character voices. Would you like to audition for us? And it was for Splash, uh, where I ended up doing 11 characters on, on Splash. Oh, yeah. Wow. You did a lot um, of characters for that show, which is yeah, yeah, and then uh, I was only I was beat out only by my rival and and very good friend Donna Kimball, who did twelve characters. We had this running sort of thing as to who was going to have more characters by the end of the the show, and so it ended up being Donna, which is fine. She's she's amazing, and oh, yeah, um, and then did a bunch of other projects, and I've I've done I've done a lot of projects with a lot of really cool people. Um, and uh, and then you know I guess one of the one of the most memorable has been has been Fraggle. Uh, it's a lot of opportunities and what a wonderful wonderful cast and uh, crew and uh, our writers and our executive producers are just absolutely the best people on this planet. Um, I oh. can't say enough great things about them. And oh. again, that's with uh, you know Johnny and Johnny Donna, uh, Amy Garcia and and myself. Um, we we worked on Splash, and for us to be able to work on on Fraggle is is just it's fantastic. Uh, so. Yeah, and you mentioned Alan Troutman; he's a good friend of ours. He was a previous guest. 
I love Alan. I just had I actually just had lunch with Alan uh, last week. Yeah. Oh wow. Nice. 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 Cool. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And um and Kevin Quash. Clash Man is always uh he, we're always staying in contact, which is great. Um oh, wow. he'll call out of the blue and uh say, Hey mister, what are you doing? And I'm and I'll tell him, you know, I'm I'm working on this or I'm doing that. What are you what are you up to? We need to get together and have lunch or meet up for you know, uh coffee or something. And uh yeah, he's he's fantastic. He's wonderfully approachable. Uh and uh he he went from from mentor to friend uh in in a number of years and uh never looked back you know we we bust each other's chops and uh i, I love the guy to death so yeah oh that's awesome oh kevin's great kevin's yes, great he's, yes he's awesome speaking of you know kevin and he now, tells you he tells you exactly where you are um i i auditioned uh henson sent over an audition for wembley initially for fraggle and um and so i did it and uh it was horrible it was the one of the worst auditions i've ever done in my life uh and then after the fact i sent it over to to clash and i said i said kevin can you take a look at this and he said he said oh that's good i don't know who that is that's not wembley i said okay <laughs> the, the puppetry's good but the voice is the voice is, is that is sounds okay. that, that sounds very kevin yeah, it yeah. was, it was, it was, uh, and, uh, and so then I thought, oh, all is lost. Oh, this is terrible. This, that ship has sailed, man. And, um, it's crazy. Second chances are kind of a cool thing, guys, really. Uh, yes. and, uh, and so they reached out about a month later and they said, uh, would you send in a voice audition for Junior? So, uh, so it was, it was one of those, one of those things of like, oh, okay, sure. Uh, let me, let me see what I can do. And me being the overachiever, I sent them an audio. Uh, it, there were five characters in the scene. It was Junior, Ma, Pa, and then the two shrubs from season one. Do you remember those, those two? That were like, yes. oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, performed oh, yeah. Expert, yeah. expertly yep. performed by Ingrid Hansen and and Kira Hall. Um, nice. And uh, so I recorded. And I layered five characters and I sent it in and it was this whole scene. And then they sent me a message, a very kind message saying, Dan, we know that you've got range, but could you just send us a junior? And what they wanted to do was piece it in with everyone else who they had had in mind auditioning for the other parts. And before I sent it over to them, I sent it over to, to, to Kevin. And I said, what do you think? I'm trying to uphold Richard Hunt's legacy of work. Uh, and at the same time, I'm trying to make it mine. Um, where is it? And he said, first off, he's beautiful. Second off, you're never going to be rich. You're never going to be him. So the best you can do is, is commit yourself to the work, do the work well. Uh, I said, I want to be honest. He says, do it honestly. And, and you'll be, you'll be fine. And that voice stuck in the back of my head the entire time that we were shooting, especially on the days that you doubt, especially on the days that you're like, I'm garbage, I'm trash. I'm, I have more compost than Marjorie at this point. And, and it was, um, it was refreshing, but I had, but I did have uh, recordings of Richard that I would listen to between takes so that I could keep his spirit alive and keep him going. Um, and and honor you know junior as as well as i could but but still making him uh my little big guy so, <laughs> oh, so yeah. that's awesome that's awesome yeah kevin's great he'd be a really great guest we've been trying to get him on too yeah he's, he's busy he's, he's a busy guy oh yes yeah. of course yep. so um you know kind of touched base a little bit earlier but what's it like you know working with the other puppeteers for the very first time? Uh, I think we were all, I can't speak on behalf of everyone, but I think the majority of us were, were pretty scared, man. Um, to be right, Cause you're continuing this iconic show. Yeah. 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 It, it, it's, it's fear out of, and fear in the best way, but fear based on, um, out of respect and out of love for, for something that means, because it still means so much to us. Um, 
and we wanted to do it right. And we weren't sure how people were going to take it. People who were diehard fans, how they were going to take what we do, or what we did. And um, the first time I walked into the Gorg set, holy smokes, this thing, I kid you not. You walk in and and it's it's multi-stories tall and it's, I don't know, it's like 30 gorgs wide. I don't know how, how you measure something like that. Um, I'm, I'm not a ruler. No, I'm not a ruler. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's one of those... It's one of those things that you 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 like. This is massive, and the amount of detail and and the the artisanship, the the craftspersonship, um, was just it was staggering, right? And and I thought to myself, how am I going to fill this with enough skill and talent to to you know to bring those characters to life and have them live in this world? And I just started to cry just bawling and so once we we had met some of the puppeteers some of the puppeteers we had worked together before mm-hmm. some more brand new to 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 my life um and others were were a little uh they had they had a lot of stage experience but some of them didn't have a whole lot of tv experience so uh there they were there were workshops there were uh, uh all kinds of things that, that were involved in in getting everyone used to each other because it's this back and forth of trust that happens on stage and um and i found something really peculiar uh everyone was amazing everyone was absolute not just not just amazing technically as a puppeteer and and sync and focus and all of these things but they were just amazing right. people like johnny has this this way about him that he picks really cool, good people. Um, and because there's sometimes that you work on a project and it's a good project, right? Uh, but there are sometimes people that aren't always playing on the same field as you are. They're like, right. I don't know. And, and uh, this felt... It, li- it sounds so trite and it sounds so used, but uh, it was like the Olive Garden of, of puppetry. You know, when you're here, your family, everyone was a family and everyone was looking out for yes. each other and everyone cared. And, and I, I know that a lot of that translated to the screen. Uh, it yes. just felt and feels like home. It really, wow. really does. Yes. And, uh, and it was weird because we're in the middle of COVID, so you were like this. You were like this. Right, yeah, all messed up. Yeah, yeah. You had something to say. Mm-hmm. You'd, you'd, be, you'd, you'd show half your face. And so sometimes <laughs> I'd screw up some takes because I'm like, oh, I guess that's what they look like. I never – you know, you imagine how people look like. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I was watching the puppet show, guys. Uh, can we get another take of that? Um, uh, but but you, you become fast friends. Um, because the days are so long. I mean, we're talking anywhere from 12 to 15 hour days and, um, five days a week. And, and then when you're not there, you're hanging out with people or you're, you know, you're going hiking or rafting or horseback riding or whatever it is that you're, you know, you're, you're getting to, you want to know people. And for me, it was super important to know Ben DeRoche. Uh, it, it was it, because he, he was, he was inside of Junior, so I needed to know his sensibilities. Mm-hmm. We had to become friends, and we had to trust each other. And uh, much in the same way that I was, <clears throat> I was, uh, I was Amy Garcia's body in in Splash, playing Ripple for uh, the first part of the season, and then in the, the 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 next part of the season, I was I was Raymond Carr's body uh, for Dunk, and so. Ray and I had this tradition, like every morning we'd share a burrito together. And, um. and, uh, because first off, Henson burritos are huge. Right. But, but the, but the more important thing is it was the, the fellowship and the, and the trust and the, the commiseration. And by the time that we hit our stride, I was predicting about 97.6% of the time what Ray was going to do, even when he was improvising. 
<laughs> and so we we really got to know each other super well, and we're super wow. best friends now. And the first time that we met, we met in 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 the the workshop, and he said he said, uh, "Hey, what's your name?" I said, "Oh, I'm 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 Dan." Uh, he says, "Oh, that's funny because that's my middle name." I said, "Well, your your first name's Raymond, isn't it?" He says, "Yeah." I said, "Well, my first name is Ramon, which in in English translates to Raymond." And we looked at each other and we said, "Brother," and we hugged each other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, oh. and so it was it was a, oh. a Raymond Daniel Ramon Daniel uh, club, <laughs> and honestly, we haven't let go since. Um, uh. And, and oh. he's. he's He's a beautiful man. Uh, I I love him dearly, and um, and yeah. So you get to know these people, and you get to you know, try to understand their sensibilities. And Ben and I uh, really hit that off with Junior. Uh, there are times yeah. that that I as the as the voice am leading, and Ben is following. And there are times that Ben is leading, and I'm following. And there are times that we're walking stride and stride, and and we didn't even have to talk about it. It just happens. And that's when magic cool. occurs. Yes. And when you aren't in sync, uh, the character looks like it's going through a malfunction, like a like a Five Nights at Freddy's malfunction, because uh, the head's going one way, the body's yeah. going another way, and it, uh, it becomes this terrible, uh, uh, almost grotesque creature, right? Yeah. So it, it's important to <laughs> yeah. know who you're working with and to trust them. So, yeah, um, everyone was amazing. Uh, everyone working with them, we had we had zero egos. Uh, no one was like, stand back, everyone. It's my line. It wasn't that at all. It was everyone supporting, everyone focusing, everyone that's, like, that's wonderful. You know, what do you, do you need? And, and um, you know, assists, assists are amazing people. Uh, they're, they're puppeteers who come in and help you with your hands. If you have to do two things with two hands, uh, they'll help you out with that. Or if it's a tricky thing or you have to thread a needle, they really, really uh, help and sometimes you're primary and sometimes you're an assist. And that's when you put your ego to one side and you say, this is, this is going to make this moment shine in this show. Definitely. So you have to know when to, you have to know when to step up and you have to know when to, to lean back and, and let things work, you know? De definitely. Definitely. So, so far, do you have a favorite episode from Fraggle Rock back to the rock? Uh, um, they're all great in different ways. Yeah, um, I mean, that's for sure. Gosh, uh, there, there's <laughs> one of my, one of the scenes that makes me laugh the most is is the uh, is the water slide scene. Yeah, yes. oh, yes. oh my gosh! Like, yes. because we're talking we're talking real water. We're talking uh -huh. real wet, and just watching my fellow puppeteers. Uh, in ponchos or in wetsuits, uh, <laughs> handling these these legacy puppets in just this this stream of of water. Technically, from a technical standpoint, wow! Simply, simply wow! Uh, I mean, it it was it was astonishing. Yeah. Uh, and and you can't, you know, when you see a you see a picture or you watch a video of something that you've done and there are emotions that come along with it. You're like, Oh, that's, that was, that was my, you know, seventh birthday party. And so-and-so was there and we had this and you can imagine, you can see all that. Every time I watch an episode, I have to, I have to pause all of that because I can't enjoy it because I'm constantly playing back. Oh yeah. That happened right here. Oh yeah. I remember it took us, you know, it, it took me 10 takes to get this right. Or, oh gosh. Uh, or it was, you know, oh, that's the day that, that, uh, you know, uh, that Ben took a tumble and, oh my gosh, like, uh, I was so worried. And, you know, a body this big doesn't run, but man, I tell you what, I teleported over to him and made sure he was okay. Um, so, so watching, watching episodes back, it's hard to not have that, that thought in the back of your head of, oh yeah, that was 25 of us smushed up, you know, chest to back uh you know i can still feel you know uh, derek starlight's breath behind me on my ear uh or i could i can you know uh 
uh, when somebody when somebody coughs up ahead, you're like, holding my breath, holding my breath, holding my breath. Um, so, <laughs> so you know, you remember these things, right? As you're as you're watching, uh, performance wise, one of my favorites has got to be uh, the last episode yes. of, um, oh, oh, yes. of, uh, of the season uh, where Junior just has this gigantic meltdown and I, yeah, I, had, uh -huh. I had tears streaming down my face as, as we're going through it and, and I'm just living in the moment and, and, and then Gobo's turnaround on it yeah. that still chokes me out. It's choking me up right now. Gobo's turnaround of like, man, um everything's going wrong and 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 it's all my fault and because th these are things that we deal with on a daily basis right yeah uh, it, it, and it reminded me so much of kermit's scene in the desert in in the muppet movie where yes he, oh yes he's yeah. oh, yeah. like he's like he's like oh i didn't promise anyone anything oh no i i did i promised me and and it, it's that it's that moment of of honesty of of vulnerability and and everyone rallies around Gobo, and everyone rallies around Kermit, and and they make they make you know family tangible and real. Um, you know, it keeps it's, it, if you were to lift things like that, it makes it sound like I'm talking about Fast and the Furious movies. But um, <laughs> but, but basically, it's it's yeah things like that. Um, another one that I love, one of my favorite moments. Um, Amy Garcia and I got to play uh, saber tooth ink spots uh, in the in the holiday special. Mm. And, yes! Uh, oh my gosh! I love that. Not lie, it's oh my, amazing, amazing, and beautiful Amy, special. Uh, it, yes. Wasn't it great? Oh man! Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 I'm not yeah. sure it's, it's more great than that, honestly. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Amy Garcia's take on on a saber tooth ink spot reflects her personality. It, it poised strong and confident and like i'm an expert i hate everybody i'm an expert yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i and mine was was it reflects my personality of a not evolved creature yet uh and so running so i was running around set to find the ink spot the saber tooth ink spot uh he was running around and going up to to camera people and audio people and and monitors and uh our grips and you know everyone just, just <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure him out right and and then, uh, and then uh, Johnny said keep that keep that and, and so I kept it and uh, subsequently uh, it translated in, into that when you had that panning shot and you have Amy's ink spot comes in and then you have uh, Kanya and Karen hammering uh, as the as the cave fraggles, and then it, it goes over and there's a, the giant radish on the spit, and then my dumb head just going <laughs> going going by, uh, and and so you get this full spectrum of of techniques and styles and precision and uh, mania that goes along with it, and. Uh, and then, uh, and then I got to to play the ink spot that was behind world's oldest and world's youngest Fraggle um, in the transformation, yeah. and uh, and then that was our you know everyone gathered around and, and and staring up at the lights was the last shot of season one yeah. for us, and we all came together and there's there's a picture of it somewhere online, a big circle of of puppeteers just hugging each other. Oh, <laughs> yes. And it, it was the most moving thing because prior to that, Karen Prell, who is, oh gosh, she's one of the most thoughtful, um, skilled, it's not just talent, it's skill that, that goes along with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Generous, uh, uh, caring people that, that I've, I've ever had the opportunity to work with. Uh, Whatever it is that you think red is in your mind, that's that's a little piece of Karen. Uh, the bigger piece of Karen is so much more dynamic and wonderful. And uh, and just before we finished that last shot, uh, she gathered all of us around and she had us recite or repeat 
uh, a fraggle oath and we all became official fraggles on that last day Aww. and and when she finished unbeknownst to us uh confetti cannons went off poof, around all of us and it was one of the most magical experiences when we all knew that that was it that oof, i'm getting choked up um we all knew that that was it that that, <laughs> no worries but potentially that was going to be the last time that we all that we all that we were all together and uh thankfully we had a uh you know a season two and hopefully we have more seasons because uh, I hope so too. Uh, yeah, because sweet. like like a, like a family reunion you look forward to to seeing and working with all of these amazing amazing yes. people uh, yes. who are so much more than than co-workers uh they're they're truly family so. yes that's for sure yeah it's it's so awesome that, that karen still you know you know still, Karen's still doing on. it yeah, which is yeah. amazing. She kills it. Oh, and she's she's oh so gosh. particular about things and so detail oriented about things. And I don't know if you guys know, but uh, she she was a Pixar animator. She's still an animator. She does uh, oh. video games and stuff like that. Oh. Uh, a lot of the illustrations that you see um, in uh, in season one um, or or uh, the original series, and there were a, a couple, I guess, in 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 season one. Uh, they're Karen's illustrations. She's a fantastic oh my uh, God. illustrator and, and cartoonist, very skilled person, and just a tr yeah, tremendous amount of respect for Karen Prowl. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. 100 percent Yes, that's absolutely that's, that's that's wonderful. And she's an adventurer. Oh my gosh. Uh we got there for season two and we were there for a week. And I get a text message from Icy Joe saying, Come on, Niblets, we're gonna go climb a mountain. And we went on a six-hour hike with Karen. It was crazy. It was crazy oh, town. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, that's cool. But, that is – yeah. wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. I think I might have saw your Insta about um, – they made a post of where they went to there or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, really... it, was, uh, it was Jordan, Karen, and myself in, yeah. at uh, mm. Mira Lake, I think it's that called. Is, that's that right. Is, I've that seen is that. so cool. Yeah, oh, my yeah, that's God. awesome. Beautiful. Yeah, speaking, yeah, yeah. You know, speaking of working, you know, everyone, what, what's it like, you know, working with, with John? You know, I feel like he, I think, he, I feel like he was such a great person to work with. Tartaglia? Yes. Yeah. Worst boss ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to hate someone so good. Oh man, he's he ah. For as much as I, for as much as I'd love to hate Johnny, I can't. Uh, I I envy his skill. I envy his energy, his organizational, his greater picture of everything, and the way that he treat like oh man, if I don't know, like he'll get a hundred different questions at the same time, and he'll and he'll be able to go, uh huh, yes, not yet, uh, green, uh, <laughs> yes, I'll, I'll, have the, I'll have the I'll have the cod uh, and, and whatever, and so it, it turns into this this thing, right? Oh my but God. Johnny, Johnny is Johnny's so much more than what you see or hear on screen. Um, for me, uh, so we we did we did Splash in 2016 and yeah 2017, yeah yeah uh -huh. yeah right? You're right and that's yeah. that's when I met Johnny. That uh, I had bumped into him once at Disney. He was there for some Imagineering thing, and I was like, oh, I love Johnny's friends. And I went over and said, "Hey, uh, I just wanted to say thanks for you know doing uh, the show, Johnny and Sprite." And he, and he was like, "Oh, you're welcome. We're very, very kind, very, very generous, very humble." Um, and then, Johnny Sprite, and then, great show as well. Yeah, yeah, great show, right? Uh, yes. And uh, it really shines. It's a, it's a beautiful show. And yes. uh, and so uh, uh, I start working with him on Splash, and I'm not sure what to make of him. I'm like, a person this good has to like i somebody's got to check his basement there's got to be bodies down there because no one can be that great a person right <laughs> uh, and and it turns out that he is um right after that i didn't work for like a full year after uh after splash so like three literally 366 days i didn't work uh like a like a a, a, a significant gig i i did benefits and fundraisers and do some 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 little right. uh, dumb projects with with friends and things like that but um 
but nothing and no, they weren't dumb projects but they were they were just i don't know things that people wanted to get done and so we did right. it. uh we'd have fun and um and in that i get a call from johnny saying hey how are you uh and we had we had a three-hour lunch three and a wow. half hour lunch, which incidentally uh you guys know there's a, a, a legendary actress or actor called uh, uh, Jack A. Harry. Uh, she was on 227 yeah. back in the day. Mm-hmm. She's been in a bunch of yep. stuff. Um, she walked by and and she knew Johnny. And Johnny knew her. And it was like one of those, oh, of course. Of course. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Um, and, uh, and we had this, this long, encouraging lunch must have been about three and a half hours wow uh, and him just i don't know how busy he is i know how yeah. busy that man is mm-hmm. but for him to take the time to help a friend when when that friend was feeling at his lowest if that's not a fraggle thing to do if that's not gobo's heart i don't know what is seriously oh. um and uh so yeah uh, johnny's pulled me in on a bunch of projects that that uh, thankfully that that uh i've been able to contribute to uh some that are public some that aren't uh because sometimes we'll do uh, something and and it ends up on a shelf somewhere with the potential of of moving forward um Mm -hmm. but uh but johnny tartaglia is is one of the one of the most focused individuals i've 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 ever had the joy to witness um and uh the way that he works, the way that he 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 deals with people, um, yeah, it's it's great. It, it's oh, there's nothing like it in 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 the whole world. And seeing him as a wonderful. seeing him as an executive producer, seeing him as a performer, seeing him as a writer, seeing him as a as a as you know as one of the gang, um, it's it's pretty great to see how many how how multifaceted he is, oh, and yeah. how love how lovely. Yeah, so. Similarly, do you have a favorite song from Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock? Uh, I gotta say, Go with the Flow. Has yes! Oh my god. It's a great, great song. Amazing. Yes. And amazing and song. There's so many, with, this this so many good and, songs, honestly. <laughs> it's a tie with Come and Follow Me. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it really, yes. really is. It's, uh, yeah, I got to, I got to uh, do a very deep like baseline in in that in that song um wow which was out, outside of my comfort zone it was like yeah yeah uh and then amy kills it as uh as uh what is the name of that character uh it's the bass player uh brule 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 um yeah she kills it with the, her uh with, with her interpretation of 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 that character it's great yeah um everyone did an amazing job uh everyone who was who was in that band uh yeah, just just really kills it. But uh, but Amy going into this <laughs> just like what? What was that? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so inspired. Yeah, no, no, everyone pushing pushing their A game, pushing their A game. Yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. Such a such an uh, amazing song that that is. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, and um, speaking, you talk about that um, nine alive, some special, the the, mag, the the magic song. Oh my gosh, it's oh. amazing! Oh, it's you know, it, it's it's crazy because you know we we record them ahead of time, right? So mm-hmm. we go yes. and, and yep. they send us the they send us the the uh, the scratch tracks, and we're listening, and like okay, um, that's the entire song. Now uh, there's a there's a track that has only my parts. So then I, I can focus on on learning that and going in and not taking six hours to to learn a song on the spot. Uh, and shout right. out to uh, to Emma at Rocket Studios, amazing, amazing, oh, amazing yes. stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, just getting us ready to do it and giving us the confidence to do it uh, is is sort of huge. It's, it's like half the battle there. Uh, and then uh, and then Harvey, Harvey was. Oh gosh, I was so intimidated. Everyone told me, don't, don't look up Harvey. Don't look him up because you're going to, you know, you'll undermine your own confidence. And I look up and I'm like, 
I do what I want. I'm looking up Harvey. I'm looking up Harvey. Harvey Mason Jr. And he's worked with, I mean, look him up. Look him up. And look at the credits to his name and who he's worked with. And going in there and like, uh, we're talking like Aretha Franklin, Michael Jackson, Britney Spears. We're talking about all these like huge people who were like, I think Cher's in there too. Uh, there just a bunch of what? people that he was that he's that he's been uh, that he's produced over the over the decades, and then you get wow. into the booth with him, and he's like he's like, can you can you do that with a little more character? I'm like, all right. So I then I sing it like or you know whatever you know character it might be, um, and so being able to get past the the uh, the intimidation and and get to the fun is uh, is kind of a is kind of a challenge in itself. So right. uh, and that's what, and that's what Harvey wanted. Harvey wanted us to have profound, explosive fun, and at the same time have real and honest voices. So it would translate, especially with the songs that were more sincere. Yeah. So yeah. 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 It's a, yeah. There's so many great songs that have honestly like like there you, you can't pick only just one because there's so many good ones that because if you because if you yeah i'll be right back you keep talking okay. you keep okay. Okay. Right. right back like, because i have to show you this oh okay so if you tell if you tell like if you tell me like what's my favorite like song back to walk walk a walk a walk a baby oh my gosh Guys, nice. you get that the is, vinyl. That is, that the vinyl is, is amazing. That is awesome. Uh, I I actually had it shipped to to Canada, and I got all of our Fraggle friends to sign it. Oh, oh. that is that is awesome. Wow, yeah, yeah. Well, this is, this is awesome. Great. Okay, we're uh, gonna do an we're gonna do an unboxing real quick. Uh, <laughs> okay, real quick. Just because uh, this is. Absolutely. Hey, baby, look at that. Wow. Whoa. Uh -oh. oh, my gosh. If you're listening on audio, just switch to the video version. It'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Isn't that that, crazy? Is, that oh, is crazy. My gosh. Wow. That is so yeah. awesome. <sighs> Looks wow. beautiful, too. That is, yeah. yeah. Yes. It yes, it really amazing. does. It sounds yeah. absolutely Yes, so, that's that's awesome. Like, if you tell me like what my favorite song "Back to Walk," like I'm gonna pick three, of course. You know, go go with the flow. Okay. Magic, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yes. It's a great one. And and uh, Doozer, the Doozer song. That's a good one. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Uh, the the working song, work work work. Uh, yeah. Legend of Icy Joe. Come on. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 But, you know, I feel like my favorite song is probably gonna be go like <laughs> change in time to time. But for me, as of right now, go over the flow of magic and uh and the shine on the and the shine on us now. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, but, uh, uh, songs. Shine on us. Oh god, what a what a yeah, voice. Yeah. God, what a yes. voice. Yes. Which I know yeah. which oh, what was her name again? Uh Patty uh, LaBelle. Uh, Patty LaBelle. LaBelle. Yeah. Yeah, I know she did did some songs for Sesame Street as well, especially mm -hmm. the um the A B C D E. Why? You mean the uh, the yeah, gospel alphabet? alphabet? Yeah, yeah, guess, guess about, about, about that's what it was. Yeah, CJ CJ C, is before your time. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no yeah, worries. Yeah, it's just before my time. No worries. Yeah, yeah just I'm, before I'm... his time. <laughs> just just like I, just like I have a new Q. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even 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 Nikki is like, oh, you you're born way before yeah. I have a new I can, Q. What, what I can be your I can be your father, brother. <laughs> <laughs> which goes which goes right back to Johnny. You know, yep. have a new Q. Johnny and Amy were in having a new Q together. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, uh -huh. Yep, and she's uh, she's actually touring right now with Into the Woods. So if it ends up oh, in your wow. uh, neck of the woods, uh, go oh, check absolutely, out. would definitely love to yeah, see. We'll do, awesome. we'll do. Yes, yeah, definitely, yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so this is very interesting. So, um, do you have a favorite? I know it's kind of hard to, but do you have a favorite Frog Walk character? Thank you for taking <laughs> this question. <laughs> thank you for taking thank you for taking my question, Jakey. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. 
I'll I'll give I'll give Jake uh, one answer and then I'll I'll give Matt another one and uh, Chris sure. if that's one of your questions as well then I'll give you one too uh, because <laughs> it's so hard to choose um, you know uh, Junior has to be has to be uh, my my headliner in in this uh, just because there's so much that goes into him and we were so hands on with with making him um, unique, I guess. Uh, yeah. When when I when I first got there, the creature shop had just gotten um, had just gotten uh, the the new junior, the new design on him, and um, and his his face was, for lack of a better term, uh, unfinished. They were still they were still working on him, and so when I saw him junior's resting face was like this and this is me for those who are listening uh his his mouth was basically a, a circle <clears throat> his resting was sort of a circle and i said you know what and this is i was talking to scotty johnson who is who's a wizard like if if he had a pointy hat a giant beard and a staff uh i would follow him into mordor uh he's just <laughs> absolutely a wizard him and 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 Jurgen uh, Jurgen's amazing uh, I I can't I can't think of uh you know a, a better person to be stranded on an island with than than uh than uh, Jurgen oh you know maybe Karen Prell because she's prepared for everything she's like she's your she's your leader in the uh in in the zompocalypse like if you had a group of of puppeteers that were going to survive in the zompocalypse Karen Prell. She's prepared for everything. Uh -huh. um, and Jurgen will fix anything and figure anything out. So he's, he's amazing. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I went up to Scotty and I said, Hey, Scotty, you know what? Junior has this, has this giant proboscis. He's got this big nose that, that kind of comes down. Can we push the corners of his mouth to kind of, to kind of fade into the nose so that it gives him an automatic smile? And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 let, let, let's do that. And so he, he went in and kind of pushed him in and pinned him into place just temporarily, and it made a huge difference. And it made Junior more approachable, and it kind of gave you a little peek into his heart um, because, you know, Junior on his own is, is, is love and kindness and all of these things, uh, very, very un like behavior. But uh, so... So we were able to 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 you know kind of workshop some of that and uh, you know Leo in in our creature shop made Junior uh, his controls work so much better and he was always on hand <laughs> literally and physically uh, Jason as well and and uh, and and so we had uh, all these these amazing behind the scenes people that I can't think of the puppet without them you know I can't think of of putting on uh, putting on Philo without Jurgen handing him to me, I can't I can't imagine a world without that. That's so. A lot of times puppets are are attached to people and not just people attached to to puppets. If you if you get my drift, um, I love. Uh, it's an unofficial name, but it's he's a little he's a little uh, baby fraggle. And uh, he, uh, we, we named him uh, Cantaloupe, uh, oh. and uh, he wears a bib, and uh, oh. he, he is, he's a piece of work. He, that little, that little dude, he's, yeah, uh, he's, he's pretty, he's pretty special, pretty cool. Uh, the ink spots, I, any opportunity, they're my spirit animal, the ink spots, um, and we, we did a screening during christmas of muppet christmas carol and oh, uh, that movie. people see, yeah, see like spots make amazing. make their appearance and then know that you know i've had a i've had a 40 year old puppet on my hand uh, it, uh -huh. there's nothing like it in in the world uh, knowing that that all of these amazing other performers have left their dna and and finger sweat finger sweat's a thing guys Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, especially if you puppeteer for for a long term for a long time, you know, most, for, definitely you know, it's gonna thing. it's gonna happen. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's yeah, a you, uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
just just being able to do things like that is, is pretty pretty great. Oh, excuse me. Um, so ink spots, uh, uh, cantaloupe, junior, Philo, I, any any character. There's there's one there's one character that um, you'll see in in season in season one, uh, and he's great. He's great. He's got salt and pepper hair, and um, and the creature shop. Uh, they attach names to all of all of the characters, and again, this is this is not official. It's not canon. It's not what it is, but it's the way for us to identify who the characters are. Um, that one holds a very special place in my heart because they named him after me backwards. His name is Nad, and uh, uh -huh. it's Dan backwards. Uh -huh. And so when I played him. Uh, he and he he also doubled for Kyle, uh, for Kyle Craggle. He, you know, he he also was that. So they would you know, take stuff off of him, put other stuff on top of him. New wig, new new eyes, new uh, clothing, all that. And um, so so Ned was was the antithesis of who I am. So he was he was angry. He was bitter. He was vengeful. He was um, yeah. He was always beating up on other Fraggles. Uh, in in you know, uh, in, in a very kind way, of course, uh, in a very fun way, yeah. lighthearted. But um, but yeah, so I guess those are some of my favorites. Yeah, and then I love seeing everybody else perform all the other characters, of course. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, uh, yes, sure. Um, you know, I want to mention um about about um Frank, like who was um Frank, Frank Meshkali. Uh, yes. Yes. Oh yes. 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 Oh my gosh. With that one. Huh. <laughs> yeah, it's like he's i feel like you know he i, I know that he's like in you know, a private for what you know you're you're doing with you know junior gorg and i feel like he's you know for what you did for you know for the for the witch no then you know, for you you know, you know but, what's you know what's really funny is what? uh frank gave me so much insight into not only not only junior right and and junior's performances but also richard and oh, yes. what he what he had learned firsthand from working alongside Richard, uh, performing with him in the in the suit for the season five, and then one of the last one of the last Gorg days that we had, Frank got in the costume again. Yes, for mm -hmm. season one, Frank yes. got in the costume so that so that Benny and I could take photos there's a picture of uh -huh. yeah of, oh uh, wait yes yes i've, yes, seen, I've that. seen that and myself yeah, me, me and, yes. and we're all doing this little this little side thing with like, the, with the, the foot tilt yeah and, uh, the castle oh the, the gourd castle is set up for night of the lights oh. and oh. in the, in, in yeah. the suit is frank meshkala wow oh that's frank, amazing yeah Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I've seen Great. that. He's done he's done a lot of other wonderful uh oh God. shows too. Yes. That so. guy is not only so busy but so hard working. Um oh, yeah. and he, he, it, he yeah. when when there aren't opportunities for puppeteers, he creates them. Oh, and he was awesome. he was our co puppet captain for, for season one and he oh, was an okay. absolute delight. He was absolutely amazing. Hey, be, we became fast friends, and uh, and I love, absolutely love, that that the son, because he played Junior's body, has now become the father, uh, and and so he's he's Pogorg, uh, and I think that's just so beautifully poetic. Oh my gosh! Yes, yes. definitely. Yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. So. Now, any Fraggle Rock, uh, Back to the Rock fans tuning in will probably want to know this, but um, can we hear a bit of Junior Gorgon Philo's voices? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, uh, man, it took me forever to, to figure out Junior. Good grief. I listened yeah, yeah, hours, I could tell. hours and hours and hours. And, and it wasn't until I stumbled on... It must have been like a forty-second interview with Richard, uh, and it's on it's on YouTube. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, and he's talking about about Junior, and he does Junior's voice 
for maybe 10 seconds, maybe 10 seconds. And so as soon as I saw him do, I said, oh, that's what I was missing. That little thing right there is what I was missing. And, and, and so, so sometimes when, 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 when Junior is, um, when he, when he, when he gets nervous, when he gets nervous, he, 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 he stutters just, just, he stammers just a little bit, right? Uh, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that he doesn't know what he wants to say. He's just a little bit, uh, what's the word? What's the word? Um, uh, nervous? Yeah, I guess it's nervous. Maybe a little nervous about, just a little bit nervous about, uh, what he's, what he's doing. Uh, but, but he, he loves, he loves the, the, to, to hang out with his friends, uh, the vitals and, uh, the plants. And, oh, I love rutabagas. Oh, I love rutabagas. Say the word. Say it with me. I I just I love Junior to death. I love how how beautifully innocent he is. He's not he's not slow. Uh everyone is like, right. oh poor thing. But that's because that's because in the original series, we hear Pa calling him a bunch of names. Names that he doesn't deserve, names that that aren't who he is, and and I wanted to define more Junior as who he is, and uh, yeah. and and uh, yeah, he. The way that I've described it in the past is what? Why does why is Junior different than everyone else? Um, because Junior is a gardener, and Junior tends to his garden with care and love. And he treats the carrots different than he treats the tomatoes. And he treats the tomatoes different than he treats the radishes. And he treats the radishes very differently than he treats the potatoes um, <laughs> or, the, or the peppers that are growing on the vine, right? Um, and the reason that he does that is because he knows how individual they are. And he prunes them when he needs to. And he waters them or he covers them up when he needs to. So he's, he's there to nurture and he's there to, to protect. And, and here's the kicker. Here's, here's the key to Junior's heart. If Junior had friends, he would treat them the way that he treats his garden. Aww. That's the heart of Junior. Junior Aww. is so desperate for, for love and companionship and acceptance that he treats that garden like they were his friends. And that's what makes it so tremendously special. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, that's that's where I found the, the key to Junior was was in the fact that he he's a gardener. And I got to see and and wear the original tunic for Junior. And, oh, and wow. on that on that tunic, there's this you, you can see it in, in the original series. There's this big patch that comes down here, right? Yeah. And and I looked at the patch and I looked underneath and there's a hole. It was a small hole. Right, it was a small hole right around here, and then there's like a little uh, square patch. So that means Junior was doing something, I'm doing something in the garden, and then a, a, a mistake happened, and oh, I, I, I cut my short. And so then he takes it and he patches it up, right? And he keeps and he goes back to work. And then there's a bigger one, and so there's a bigger patch on top of the patch that's already there. And so, uh oh, I did, I did it again. So okay, I'm all, and so. He he learns from that mistake, but he keeps going. He's persistent. He's he's consistent. And and then there's another one, which is an even longer one that goes uh -huh. all the way down. And is oh oh I oh I, oh boy I I did really did it this time. And so then that's <laughs> stitched up. So the fact that there are three and then on top of the one on top of that stitch, there's a little there's a little cut on top of that. So the fact that that Junior is tenacious and he refuses to give up gave me so much insight from just his wardrobe that everything can be going wrong but his optimism that there's still hope that there's still a way that there's still a chance to do things right is is the core of who junior is and and i love that so much yeah. so that's so yeah nice. that's that's awesome that's a that's a little insight into into junior and that i guess segue from his voice Philo, on the other hand, is completely different. All right, so here, let me, okay, I'm going to tell you something about, about Philo, okay? So with Philo, for example, um, now, now, don't get me wrong. 
I love Gunch. I love Gunch like I love my own brother because he is my brother. <laughs> but but here's the thing. Here's the thing. When 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 it comes to when it comes to Marjorie, I, I gotta say that uh, indubitably, I must say uh, imperatively, I must uh, consider uh, factually, I must uh, say uh, that I'm her favorite. I gotta be her favorite. I I just feel I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that sounds about right. Hey, I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm okay. I'm holding my own here. You know, that's holding good. My own. <laughs> that's good. And and, and things yeah. and, and things are going well out there at the Rock. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, they're dynamite. They're super. They're fantastic. This the 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 super uh, super awesome. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Happy to hear. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, nice, nice to hear both of you. <laughs> yes. And well, here's the here's the thing. I called Dave because because Philo was was his was his character is his character. Mm -hmm. Um, and I said I said first off, thank you so much for you know for trusting me with with this with this character uh, because there wasn't any any voiceover on it. It was it was all it was going to be me uh, because it's really hard to to capture that back and forth and johnny and i trust each other so much that it's like this ping pong match right back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. there's a big energy mm -hmm. right and uh and so uh i called up uh dave uh, via via zoom and the first thing that he said was that he loved what was going on with junior because he was he was watching the dailies and he said i, I love what you're doing with junior it's great etc cetera, etc cetera. uh and then i said i said dave thank you so much i, I appreciate it. i was like drawn to tears of course uh, I said, but Dave, the reason that I'm calling is I want to know, you know, who is Philo and why is Philo and where is Philo and what is. And so I went through the who, what, where, when, why uh, of, of Philo. And he said, I said, I've been studying you and I've been, and he said, let me stop you right. Here. You're studying me, but who you should be studying is Richard. You should be studying Gunj because I was just copying Gunj. I was like, what? He says, we're basically two New Jersey teenage shills that just love Marjorie. And we're, we're, we're her hype guys. And we'll do anything for her. And, and so that's, that's what he, that's his only, his only uh, note was probably go a little bit higher. And so, uh, so I went a little bit higher with him. Uh, that's, that's what happened. So uh, I don't know. Sometimes uh, he just, he just can't just happens. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh mm. yeah, yeah, yeah they're awesome yeah i, I love them yeah. so much and putting putting those characters on is is a humbling experience it really really is it's it's no it's a character doing the character you know so yeah 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 because right. going back to what i said earlier you know it's important to you know continue a character's legacy yes from the original Mm -hmm. And the thing is, you can't you can't just copy it. You can't right. Just, right. You got to right. make it your own too. Make it your own. You really do because otherwise, it's 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 like um, it loses its 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 honesty. Uh -huh. And and if you that's and probably if you one of the key that, things yeah. for the, yeah. the reboot, you know. That's yeah. and that that's why that's why one of the things when sometimes you'll see a you'll see a a. a or hear a, a, a character on a, on a TV show, a cartoon or something like that. Right. And it's been passed down from one person to the next, and it's no slight on the next person, but they're so focused or I, because I've done this too, been so focused on getting the tone and the cadence and the, the affectations and, and all of those things right. So that I sound like, you know, I sound like Bullwinkle J. Moose or something like that, right? But if I'm so right. focused on what he, what he sounds like and not who he is, then it's just a cardboard cutout. It's not a, it's not a real character. So, so that's that's super important to 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 have and keep that honesty and make it your own is part of part of that um, that recipe. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to ask? You want to ask this one, Julius, since you're here? Yes, I'd be happy to. Go ahead. You also worked on the uh, PBS series. Hi. Now, now you say <laughs> hi to me. Wonderful. <laughs> you also 
worked on uh, we kind of touched up in this earlier splash and bubbles which yeah for those who which uh, for those who do not know use both motion capture and animatronic technology what was doing a show like that like crazy town i bet <laughs> Splashing splash and bubbles is essentially Fraggle Rock underwater. That's that's what the show is, and you can see Johnny's heart all throughout that show. Oh yeah, because that, he's, cause he's oh, the yeah. one who created created that yep, show yep, too. Yeah. Not just Johnny and Sprites, but that show too. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, and uh, you know, Mike, Michael, Sean, Lewis, and and everyone who who was on board on uh, with with that show brought so much. Uh, Hallie is is amazing. Lisa's amazing. Um, we with with splash like the first two weeks that we were doing it we had to puppeteer if you were in the vol vol the volume is a place uh where the reflective uh balls that we had on these on these uh fish mechanical fish um were uh were swimming around and, and being captured by infrared lights that come down and, and like track everything from 360 right there was an issue that ha that arose, and for the first two weeks, we puppeteered barefoot. We had no because we were shocking the fish, and it was affecting the system. And they finally, you know, Brian was troubleshooting and figuring things out, and how do we make it safe, and how do we make it, you know, work, and all that. And and to his credit, and to everyone else's who contributed to that show, uh, they figured out how we could do it with shoes on and not create so much static electricity that the fish would like, essentially like <laughs> so it was it was uh, necessary to to figure that out but it was um it was crazy i don't know if y'all you've probably seen uh henson's uh the henson digital performance system uh the hdps mm -hmm. uh and the way that it works it's like it's like you're playing a pipe organ because there's so many different controls and so many different expressions. You're literally using all four limbs. So you're using your, your uh, dominant hand to gesticulate. Uh, you move forward, backward. You have different expressions that are attached to them. You have another, uh, your other hand, you have the, uh, the eyeball cup and the head movements and the blinks and the eyebrows and all of that. And then your feet, you can yeah. assign different expressions to those too. So like for dunk example, uh, Ray would would step on a on a thing and he would inflate and he would deflate. Um, so you could assign different things to it. And that show was a revelation as far as the way that an ensemble cast works. It just everyone had their moment to shine. Everyone and that was again translated back to to Fraggle. Everyone has the spotlight at some point, and everyone has has the background at some point. And uh, yeah. you, you just got to, it's that give and take. So Splash was, was, was a wonderful, wonderful show to, to work on. Um, and uh, like I said, they, they allowed me to, to explore so many characters from, you know, something, something as, as large as, as a, as a whale to something as medium size as a wave, the octopus, for example, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, to someone as tiny as tiny baby little Archie. Oh, he's a little seal too. He goes up and goes down. They let me play. They let me explore. And there was so much freedom in that that it became, you know, each character became very precious uh, as far as like a list of characters. I got to uh, Charlie, uh, Ripple's dad. Um, his name is Charlie. His middle initial is C, and his last name is Horse. So Charlie Seahorse um, has 500 kids. 499 of them are male, and one is female, and that's Ripple. And they said we want him to be, uh, we want him to be reflective of of Ripple's uh, background. And Amy had had chosen because she is Latina uh, to to go that route. And I'm Latino, so so. Charlie became uh, based on my, he was based on my grandfather. And, and so I first started off with, with a very deep grovelly, okay, this is what's going to happen. Okay. Because anytime I would talk about my grandfather, it would be like this, you know, there are three kinds of people in this world, that kind of thing. That's, that's, that was my, that was my grandfather. 
And then, uh, so we're on set and we're figuring it out. And can you take out some of the grommel? Yeah, yeah. Can you make him a little warmer? Yeah, yeah. Can you can you age him down a little bit so he's not so old? Yeah, absolutely. It turned into me. So generationally, I went from being my grandfather to being a version of me that I'm that I am with my kids. Hey, Mika, you know, it, it, this, that, and the other. Um, and uh, and so they they let me bring these elements to characters that would otherwise be stale and and I guess cookie cutter. Uh, they let they let me thrive and play. And to to Henson's credit, that that's what they do best is they allow characters to live and breathe and work and and be who they are. So yeah, Splash was amazing. Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. wonderful. Yeah, great show. Um, I wish we, I wish we had more. I wish we had more seasons, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it, yeah. That, it, that show like it didn't last for very long. No, it didn't. We shot we shot eighty segments which is basically 40 episodes. And uh, it was on, I want to say it was on Netflix for a little while, or yeah, it was, I think it was on Netflix. Yeah. And, and then it was on, yeah. it was on PBS. This still uh -huh. occasionally will be on PBS and, and PBS uh, uh, streaming and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and, I, and I did end up buying, I think you can still find it on Amazon. They had one big ocean, uh, the, the four part special, um, were I, I played uh, Scoot the Sea Turtle, and uh, you know he's three and a half years old, and he's looking for his way in the world. And uh, so, um, I think you can you can still find that one on DVD, which wow. which is pretty cool. Yeah, nice. But the rest That's of them are on that. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of wondering like, do you know the reason why like it got like why the show got like like I have no idea. Or... I have no idea. Yeah, I I don't know. Oh. Do you want to see something super cool? Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 I'll show you something super cool. Okay. This never happens. This never ever happens. But I'll show you something super cool. I'll show you. Okay. okay. All right. So first super cool thing is uh season one, I got a gift. Uh, uh huh. Someone gave me someone gave me a gift. <laughs> And, oh. and it's one of our radishes from from season, from our garden, from Junior's garden. Oh uh, my god! Oh. Uh, this isn't the one. This isn't the one that goes down the well, um, oh. but it's close. Uh, the one that goes down the well is actually. Hey, stop, 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 stop. Um, but on the day Benny did throw one, he he picked it up and he and he and he threw it. He lost it. He threw it, um, but. Uh, I did another show. Um, I did another show with Jim Carrey. Uh, yeah, yeah. Called Kidding. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Which, oh, which, yeah. Which, which we're going to mention that show. Yeah. In uh, In Kidding, I got to play a, a French baguette by the name of Ennui le Twist, uh, which means uh, sad and bored. And um, had an amazing time with it. And uh, it we we lasted two seasons, which which is not bad. Um, but uh, but we ended up rapping and and Jim was amazing to work with and and Frank and and uh, Catherine and Judy uh, all great uh, Dave Holstein I can't say enough beautiful things about that beautiful man um, Michel Gondry uh, he is is a wonderful guy um, but uh, but you know what guys so is on we we miss you. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh wow! Oh my gosh! Uh -huh. This this is the original on Wheel of Twist. Oh, uh, wow. this is, oh, this is cool. Mac here down here. Uh, that Mac was made by the beautiful Greg Ballora. He's a genius. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the puppet itself was made by Swazzle. Um, oh, Swazzle! Oh, I love Swazzle. And uh, and yeah, so now on we. Uh, lives here, which is kind of cool. Well, that is, that is oh, that's cool. cool. That's, so that's, awesome. cool. that's cool. I do not get excited about many things, but this makes me <laughs> smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I'm kind of wondering, what was it like uh, working with Jim Carrey on it? Yeah, uh, Jim was nothing but uh, but kind and generous, and uh, you know the 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 day. The first day that I ever made him laugh, 
uh, I went and sat in my car and just I you if if you had told people that the sun was still out, which it wasn't, uh, I was beaming so hard that that rays were coming out of my face. Uh, it, I turned into the Teletubby sun, and it was it was the coolest <laughs> oh. thing in the world. It was uh, I made him laugh while we were doing the the whole uh, whistling with crackers in your mouth bit, um, and uh, and that was that was super fun. Um, yeah, very generous. Uh, uh, um, he was he was a, a very normal guy to me, anyway. Um, just wanted to talk about stuff, about normal life, and you know. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, we 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 met up uh, at a at an event, an FYC uh, uh, for your consideration, like an Emmy event. And uh, gave me the biggest hug out of the out of the blue, and. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, he's 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 he was a delightful person, uh, both oh, season one and, and two awesome. to work with, and yeah. uh, tremendously generous. And we made each other laugh. And I could have oh. sworn that I I threw his back out once because um, oh. he because at the, at the time uh, I was about I've, I've lost a little bit of weight, but he uh, I was about a hundred pounds heavier. And uh, I'm on this I'm on an Oz around which is one of those things that you lie on uh, so that the character can walk, right? It has a little roll, roll, rollies on it and stuff like that. And we had just finished uh, the scene where, um, oh, it was the scene where he's talking about divorce and um, and it's it's him and Judy and myself. And um, and we finished it up and, and Jim was very generous and he reached down to, to pick me up oh, and the boy. easiest way to get out of an Oz around is for you to go from your back to your side to your knees oh and then gosh. get up uh, because it's on wheels so it's it's moving like this mm-hmm. and so he reaches down and I'm not going to say no to Jim handing trying to help me get out and uh, it's, so he, he, he grabs and the look on his face from from like yeah, we did it. To, geez, you're heavy. <laughs> 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 it was fantastic. He oh, went. God. He went from. He went from. Yeah. To. Oh, well, maybe this is a better. Idea. And <laughs> he grabs. He puts his other hand on on my head. And, <laughs> and uh, I ended up getting onto my feet and. And uh, I gave him a hug. I said, "Hey, thanks, man." And uh, and I'm sorry about about your future masseuse appointment. And he laughed, and, and it was cool. But uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a good time. Uh, we had a lot of amazing puppeteers on that. We had um, we had Mike Quinn. We had the Johnsons. We had uh, Peggy Etra. We had uh, Greg Ballora, uh, Christian Charney, uh, uh, who else? Uh, Christian Anderson. Um, uh, Artie Esposito. We had all like uh, we had Dorian Davies. We had oh, we had uh, you know just a, a huge amount of, of of skilled, wonderful, delightful puppeteers that worked on this, um, and suit performers. We had uh, we had our our, um, our snaggle horse folks uh, in inside of of uh, a snaggle horse. It was just it was crazy, man. What a what a weird, wonderful show. Uh, just full of in-camera creativity and heart and and pathos and drama and just so good, yeah. <laughs> awesome, yeah, yeah. I, I can, I could, I could definitely tell you know, that you're lucky to, you know, working with Jim because you know he's he's <laughs> he done lots of movies. He's yeah, yeah. He had his own like, camera so, like some, like Sonic the Hedgehog. And, yeah, um, he, he had, second uh, one as after, well. after season one, he he went and shot Sonic. But yeah. he has he has so much already, like he has so much innate knowledge that he knew where he was based on the on the distance of the camera, the yeah. lens that was on the camera. And so he knew exactly where to position his body. And he'd hit those marks over and over and over. Uh he'd hit emotional marks over and over and over. And so would everyone else. I mean, uh I was floored by by Ginger Gonzaga's uh, performances, and I and I told her, and um, 
she's she's absolutely she was a revelation to me at that at that point. And she had done a bunch of stuff, but uh, she was absolutely delightful. Uh, Judy was amazing. Frank uh, Frank Langella was uh, intimidating at first, but uh, but he was very approachable and, and a really cool guy. Uh, Catherine Keener, I can't say enough good things about her. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, uh, just just great altogether. Altogether, the cast was fantastic. Awesome. Oh, that's that's awesome. So, kind of where I sp- kind of get back to to Splash and Bubbles. Do you have a favorite like favorite episode and favorite character from Splash and Bubbles? Uh, a day for Papa is one of my favorite oh, yeah, uh, Splash one. and Bubbles episodes because it's about Charlie Seahorse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, uh, there's so many really great wonderful uh episodes uh, um that you know when we meet z the shark or or uh the first time we meet gush is is alan troutman's uh, again uh, oh, yeah. fantastic as as gush um almost it, i kept telling him i was like alan you know if bernie sanders were were living underwater that's that's who i think gush is and uh <laughs> it, just, it just felt like him it really did um yeah, uh, and and then you know Johnny and Leslie and and uh, Leslie Carrar is just my gosh. You want to you want to talk about energy and skill, uh, having a baby. That's Leslie, and uh, pure joy and and love and and just a fantastic human. Um, oh yeah. Occasionally yes. bring her dog Harvey to or, or a um, New, Newman New, uh, uh, Newman Newman. Newman? Something like that. Newman. I think it's something like that. Something yeah. like that. No, no, no. It, it, it's uh, based on Newhart. Gosh, Newhart. Newhart. Yes. Okay, Newhart. Newhart. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Uh, bring bring Newhart to set, and uh, yeah, yeah, always always fantastic. Always a great time. Yeah, yeah Leslie's she, great. She she might she might be a future guest of ours too. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, she's she's wonderful. Yeah. Well, good luck uh, with that. Abby, 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 Abby Ginger. <laughs> have fun with yeah. that energy level. <laughs> uh, we definitely will. <laughs> definitely she's so yes. good yeah yes, yes yeah she's wonderful definitely yeah you should uh you should think about uh ray Carr too ray is is amazing he was uh lazy town when he was like yes. a, a child uh walking with dinosaurs uh splash he uh you know all kinds of that that guy is i uh, i just I want him to have the world, and I hope that someday he has it. It's oh, great. Definitely. It's, it's, it's yeah. kind of funny. Speaking of Lazy Town, we actually did um, produce an interview with someone who worked on Lazy Town, aka David Matthew Feldman, who yes. puppeteered uh, Mayor um, Mayor, Mayor Milford means well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. right on. Yes. Amy Garcia yes. was also in Lazy Town. That's right. Yes. Yes. He's one of the performers yeah. of Trixie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 David. Yeah. He's he's awesome. Yes. A great friend of mine. He's. Uh, uh, well, honestly, hours. What too. about the rest of us, right? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Just, like, just, like, just, like, I, I, I know all of us are. are I know three of us are. Even my podcast is naked about with, with, me. With them, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh dang it, I can. <laughs> you you take you you take this one. Okay, so you you also worked as a production assistant in the animation industry, yeah. including Fanboy and Chum Chum and the Penguins yeah. of Madagascar. What was it like working on those? Oh, I tell you what, man. Uh, Robles is this is, uh, this is Eric Robles, uh, an inspiration, absolute inspiration. Uh, he was the creator of Fanboy and Chum Chum, uh, and a uh, a really really cool cat, man. Uh, I have when people say there's an open door policy, like his door was wide open. Like if I had oh. questions about stuff, if I had doubts about things. I was new to the animation industry. I'd been in, I'd been on stage doing uh, live production by that point for about 20 years. So it wasn't, I wasn't like a, like a new kid, but it was, it was different. Uh, give me one second. Did I get a charger? That, it's just so I can, cause I'm like low on my phone, dude. Thanks man. Um, my son, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Nickelodeon was a, was a, a an amazing place to work uh, with amazing people to work, um, and uh, and it was it was super cool, super super duper cool. Uh, Penguins yeah. was a great show to to work on and yeah. to uh, 
to kind of cut my teeth. And then from there, I, I went over to, I well, when I first got to LA, I first worked at uh, Disney Feature Animation. And yeah. uh, I was there, I was there for about six months. And then my contract expired and ended up uh, going over to Nick and uh, meeting with just, I mean, everyone from, you know, Jeff DeGrandis to Butch Hartman to, uh, you know, uh, uh, met uh, uh, Mark and Brian who were working on, uh, they were working on the new iteration of Avatar at the time. And um, they were doing, yeah, it was, it was, it was just a crazy uh, group of, of awesome people that, um, that I was very privileged to work with and, uh, and, and still am. You know, I still look at it very fondly. The, that studio was, was was and is a crazy place to work. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, I, I remember grew up watching both um, Penguins Madagascar and Fanboy, Fanboy and Chum Chum. Yeah. yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Fanboy and Chum Chum, Chum was an interesting show, but it was it yeah, was, it was fun. <laughs> it was yeah. it was a fun little show. It is yeah. a fun show, man. Like, yeah, it it was funny because uh, at Nick. At Nick, it, it was very open. When I went over to Disney, Disney was like, "All uh, right, so so we're not gonna do a whole lot of fart jokes." Uh, and Nickelodeon was like, "How many fart jokes can we cram into a single episode?" Uh, so the the <laughs> going from going from uh, zero <laughs> to zero to sixty, stepping on the gas, um, was uh, was was kind of a culture shock. But it was it was really really cool thing to to see how everyone maneuvered around that yeah Yeah. definitely so now speaking of your work with uh with disney what was it like getting to work with uh disney interactive and the walt disney internet group uh we were we were like um it was like the wild west man it was cool because we we were just starting thing you know uh, interactive had been doing club penguin and pirates online and all these you know all these interactive games toon what was it toon town toonville toon something oh, yeah, um, Toontown. yeah i remember toon town right so they were doing all yeah, these, yeah. these uh-huh. really yeah. cool interactive games uh club penguin was like super hot at the time and uh but they they brought us in to do something called dmo it was disney movies online and which later ended up turning into an iteration of Disney plus. And, um, and it was, it was, it was weird. It was because I had never been in, in that sort of, that sort of uh, environment where everything was, it felt like a startup. It really felt like a startup part, you know, uh, part of the the company was, you know, the, the giant Disney name, but the other part of it was like, oh, we're going to try this and see if it works. See if it works. Like that's that's a lot of money to see how it yeah. works. And see how it works. Yeah, there's, there's, there's yeah. <laughs> something succeeded dramatically well, and other things needed another iteration. And um, and so I moved around. I started off as as a uh, as a coordinator, and then once I started doing more things and started getting more involved with 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 tasks and and uh, assignments and all of these things, I started overseeing uh, groups, and I became an associate producer. Then we became a producer and we started um, both creating and curating content. So we would see things online that were like, oh, that's kind of Disney S. Let's partner with that person. Let's partner with them. And uh, and so uh, when I left Disney, by the time that I left, I was manager of digital distribution. And which is just a fancy way of saying we are my team was responsible for content packaging, processing uh, and uh and placement delivery of things online. So everything that you would see on YouTube, uh, a lot of my thumbnails, like a lot of the original thumbnails that I did back in the day were part of us trying to figure it out are still up today. And they have, you know, millions of views, like all of the Mickey shorts, uh, daily, uh, the daily Doofenshmirtz, uh, which was a weekly show, which was funny. Um, all of our uh, playlist stuff and nails and hair and all of those other things. And we, we started all of that. We st- our, our little group started all of the stuff that ended up later becoming Oh My Disney. Uh, and Oh My Disney ended up making a cameo in Wreck-It Ralph 2. That's right. So, yes. Oh. So, uh, oh. so yeah, it's, it's really weird the way that, the way that things kind of, 
kind of work and they grow and things like that and and uh, work with a lot of really dynamic people and uh, it was it was a great learning experience but for me it wasn't it wasn't what I was built to do so when I had the opportunity to go and and do something that was more my more my speed uh, or more my inclination um, and Henson said you know We'd we'd love for you to be part of our family. Um, I I jumped at the opportunity and and I continue to jump at the opportunity. Definitely. So, so um so because you know Vlog a Wall Back to Your Wall you know has won and, and got nominated for several awards. You know how does it feel to you that the Frog Walk franchise you know still such a success you know still to this day? Man, it's humbling. It really is because you're part of something that that meant something to you. And I hope that yes. what we do means something to someone else. I, I, I really, I really hope that, that someone out there identifies with any of our characters, you know, even if it's, even if it's a digit in the background, eating a fern, you know, identify with, with something uh, or someone, you know, um, and, and honestly, if we can help anybody get through stuff, I mean, that's, that's the most important thing. When we were doing kidding, for example, yeah. um, you know, we, we did uh, episode five of season two was an, an episode, all puppet episode uh, about divorce. And, and on, we became, we became the child of divorce. And I wanted to portray it as honestly and as viscerally as possible. Because there are people that that look to to media to make connections and say, "Oh, I'm not alone. I, I don't feel like I'm, you know, alone in this in this um, in this journey." And it gives me hope. And people have reached out and said, "You know, that episode really helped us through, you know, what we were going through. We were going through a divorce, and we sat down with our kids and we showed them the episode, and and it made all the difference in the world. They understood a little better." Uh, or um, you know the the whole idea of loss. Uh, someone someone reached out to me and said, you know, I, I I lost I lost my son, and through watching your show, it helped me it helped me start to heal. Um, and so uh, so that I think ultimately that's what that's that's our business. You know, that's what we do. Um, and and things like things like this are super cool, um, but ultimately. If it looks great, but it doesn't mean anything, then it doesn't mean anything. And fortunately, we work with a bunch of really intuitive, and smart people who not only know that things mean something, but they make it, they make it a point of, of making it real. And that's super important. Yes. So, um, so I, I, I hope that the work that we do is uh, is multi-generational uh and my wife mm -hmm. has told me that she's like it's so weird that someday your great 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 grandchildren would are gonna know what you sounded like <sighs> that kills me man it really does it's it's crazy to think that down the road someone is actually gonna know that my heart was this or that my, you know, my emotions were that or, or whatever. Um, and so I hope, I hope that what we're doing means something to, to people and, and, and really it helps them through hard times, you know, definitely, yes. definitely. Absolutely. So, so I know, cause we're going to be kind of wrap, wrapping this up soon. Another puppetry thing I wanted to briefly bring up that you worked on was the, the happy time murders. What was it like working on that? <laughs> Oh, man, <laughs> happy time. Holy smokes. Um, <laughs> remember when I said that I, I went 366 days without working? Yeah. Yeah. Happy time broke that streak. Happy time was the reason that I started working again. And oh for as, as much as much grief or uh, or negative comments that, that people have about it, it holds a really special place in my heart because it helped get me back on my feet. Oh. And, uh, and I love, there's, there's a really, 
there's a fun story um, of us being on set and uh, it's during a, uh, a scene in a bar, um, which unusual, uh, but it's a scene in a bar and uh, there, there's some there's some rabbits that are around the, the the stage of this bar, and there's a there's a monkey, in in a corner, and he's sitting on a or he's a, he's at a table, and uh, so they're doing uh, assignments. And uh, Kevin was our was our uh, clash was our um, was our puppet captain on this. He says, "All right, so you go there, you go there, you go. Uh, yeah, uh, do do the monkey." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So crawl under the stage because the raised stages crawl under there get up inside it so you're up inside this thing you have your monitor up there and there's a, a chair it's got a hole cut into it stick my arm through they put a they put a monkey on it um uh, and kevin says can you go higher oh yeah sure so i go a little bit higher and, hey i need you to go higher all right uh can i get a half apple box those are boxes that we stand on or sit on and so they brought in a half apple brought it up. now my face my face is against is against the cushion like this, right? And I'm looking down at my monitor. I could still work, and my hand is like up here, and then under my face. And then Kevin says, "Dad, can you go? Can you go higher?" <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, I can. If if you hog out the up uh, the underside of this chair, then I can I can do. Now just just get out of it. Just get out. Russ, Russ. He calls in Russ Walco. Russ, get in, get in there, and 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 do the monkey. And Russ has these. He's he's a uh, Mr. Fantastic, so he's got these elastic arms that go on for miles. So if you have a baby that's like needs rescuing from the tenth floor of a burning building, call Russ Walco. Uh, he's got the longest arms in in the galaxy. And so Russ gets under there. They put the 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 puppet on him. Kevin says, "Go a little bit higher." So he, of course, he goes higher. But I'm sure his face isn't touching anything, not breathing in any foam or anything like that. And then you hear you hear Brian, <laughs> you hear Brian, and I'm off to one side now, uh, standing next to, to Bill Beretta um, as he's preparing with Phil. With uh, him and Alice Deneen are getting ready for this this shot, and um, and I um, I can see Kevin, and I hear Brian say, um, I, who are you? who's that on the monkey? Is that Dan? Dan, can you can you go lower? on the monkey and i look over at kevin <laughs> i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna kill you <laughs> and, <laughs> and and so russ goes a little bit lower and then brian says uh can you go a little lower than that <laughs> <laughs> um and so i i i still to this day i bring up that story uh, oh to goodness. Kevin, and the first time I told him that it was probably I don't know three years after we had shot it. He said that happened. I said that. I said, Would I be telling you if you if you didn't say that? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, so yeah, the, the that 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 darn monkey uh, in the in that shot is one of my more more, me more memorable scenes. But yeah, uh, uh, that's nothing, awesome. but love, oh. nothing but love. I have nothing but love for that movie. Uh, even though it wasn't it wasn't received as as well as we would have liked, mm -hmm. uh, it yeah. still means a lot to me. So. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yes, yes. And speaking of you mentioned Bill Beretta, where in the future we might gonna have both him and and, and Gene. On. Oh, great! So. Yeah, yeah. They have a really they have a really great podcast. Oh, their podcast. Oh, yeah, their podcast yes. is great. Yes, especially yes. whenever they have Frank Oz on. Oh, <laughs> man. oh my gosh! Yes. So funny. Pretty awesome. Awesome. So, so overall, what do you enjoy most about being a puppeteer? That I can walk into an audition and it's based on what I can do and not what I look like. Mm. I can, I can play a, a sea turtle or I can play a 20 foot gorg. Uh, or I can play, you know, the the tiniest, most invisible thing on the face of the earth, um, and it's based on on my skill and not based on my looks. Um, even though, I mean, guys, seriously, this oh, chef's kiss, but it's not based on that. You know, it's based on <laughs> it's based on what I can what I can bring to the uh, contribute to the production. That's, that's ahead. So I think that's the thing that I love the most about puppetry 
is that we can we can be so tremendously diverse we can be so tremendously like explosive and over the top but at the same time we can you know really get to the heart of it and connect on a very intimate level with our audience so that's what i love the most definitely Mm -hmm. so now i'm so i'm kind of uh interested to know so what what are you working on now can you share anything you're working on currently currently uh i can't uh i can't say much about what what i'm doing and i can't say much about what i just finished um yeah uh, you know <laughs> yeah. It was six, six months of that um but um but oh man beautiful 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 um yeah i uh, and and uh so I, I do i do voiceover too there's a show right now on uh on Disney plus called journey to the center of the earth. It's a series. Uh, nice. and, um, I played a, uh, a mechanical parrot. Uh, this was shot in Mexico or Spain or something like that. And so they had me just come in and do voice for it. And, uh, nice. so I'm in the dubbed version of it. And I played this weird mechanical parrot, uh, with an attitude and a click. Uh, so it's, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but I, I did that just, prior to to going up to do season two of Fraggle. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. I can't wait for hey. second season whenever you know that's gonna, you know, come out. Oh, you know, yeah. I, I know they're I know they're in a, you know, right now with the editing process and all that you know, so they're just you know, done wrapping and so Yeah, yeah. getting our heads out of the shots and all yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that too. That happens. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as a puppeteer and production assistant, what are some of the biggest challenges you faced in those fields? Uh, Self-confidence. I think self-confidence is, and I think everyone deals with this. Everyone fights with it. And uh, so my, my biggest, I guess my, my pro tip, pro tip is, is value yourself, value who you are and what you bring to the table. Uh, know that, know that you're, you're good. Uh, you're good enough to be there. You don't have to be perfect. Perfect is, is, is ethereal. And it's something that, that perhaps never happens and it's subjective too. Um, but know who you are and know what you can offer the world and lean into that, lean into that. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. and that's, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, for the longest time, I, I just didn't have that confidence in myself uh as as a as a manager as a producer as a writer as a performer all those other things um and every time there's a success you're like yeah i did that i deserve a little piece of chocolate um (laughs) you're like all right you're getting you're getting better uh and you're you're getting outside of that comfort zone uh that that place that that you perhaps we're living in for too long so find something find something that that really uh fills you and that you can contribute to the world to and yeah you, you can't go wrong Definitely. unless you're hurting somebody then then don't be a jerk <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah. what piece of advice would you give to anyone who wants to get into puppetry i say um the the thing that here's everyone this is the question that always comes up and, and it's a great question How do I get into puppetry? The same way you get into a puppet. You start in the back and you work your way to the front. Mm, Same way. It's the same way you put on a puppet. So you you can't puppeteer if you don't put yourself out there. You can't uh, succeed if you live in in a what if. What if this happens? Or what if that goes wrong? Or what if they don't like me? Or what if... Stop living in what if and start doing it Mm. in failure because we all fear failure in failure you will find your path to success we weren't born walking but i think i think um you know piece by piece step by step you you learn we weren't born speaking we weren't born you know uh drawing or dancing or building bridges or anything you know, building buildings that we're sitting in. 
I mean, all of these things that are around us, all the things that we hold in our hands, the things that we hold dear, um, all of those things required some level of failure in order yes. to get better. So yes. if I had to tell you one thing, uh, two words, fail gloriously. Fail gloriously. Take the chance. Do the thing. Be calculated and be safe about it. But take the chance. Yeah. You know, you know, you know, you know no it more... can be a good thing because you know you can try and get, you know, get better and you start to succeed and then all that, you know. Yeah. So, and get, yeah. again, help. That's, what, that's what a part of the business. So if you, if you need help, get help. You need to take that's classes, true. take classes. Yep. There are people out there who are, who are smart, can help you. Do it. Mm hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And exactly. kind of and kind of turning the tables, what's the best piece of advice that you've received? I guess the best piece of advice was trust yourself. Mm. Trust Absolutely. yourself. Um and uh yeah, uh um my um my grandfather, we we talked about this uh, a little while ago. Um when he had something important to say, he'd pull the car over when I was a kid. And he'd say, Mijo. There are three kinds of people in this world. The kind of people that make great things happen. They're the kind of people that watch great things happen. They're the kind of people that don't know what the heck just happened. And, and, I, and I'd laugh. And he says, your job is to pick one. Who are you? Well, I mean, I, 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 I want to make great things. Okay. But I've learned, and here's where the, here's where the power is. The power lies in this. That on any given day, whatever the situation, you can choose to be any one of those three people. You can choose to say, honestly, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to sit back. I, I'm, out of, I'm out of my element. I don't know. There's power in, in that. There's also power in saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay back and see where I can contribute. And then there's also great power in saying, I know exactly what needs to happen. Follow me. So you can make great things happen. You can watch great things happen. Or you can say, I don't know what the hell just happened. Exactly. Yeah. And, and yeah, speaking of you know, advice, you know, you even, you even, you know, gave me an advice, you know, because I, because I remember I, I, I seen you on Beans videos and you told me that, you know, the voice wise can be a little bit more better. So now the people, you know, can, you know, like yeah. no, what he is yeah. saying, you know. Some people can be like, "Oh, I don't know what you're saying," but then some people be like, "What the heck is he? What the heck is he saying? What what, what is? Right. I don't know yeah. what is he saying at all." You know. So you know, so yep. if people if people give you know, more advice to the same person, they can be more you know better, yeah. more succeed, mm -hmm. and everything. So mm -hmm. no failure can be a good thing. It's not you no. Know, when you Absolutely. think about it, it's not it's not a bad thing at all. Just you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it depends on how you say it too. Better. It depends yeah. on how you deliver the news. You could say. Something like, you know, if, if I, if I made you a cake and, and it was raw on the inside and you say that cake was the worst thing I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> How dare you? Do you even, do you even, have you tried anything in, in life? I, that's, it's abhorrent. Oh gosh, it's terrible. Or I could say, Hey, uh, that cake, have you, have you thought about doing this? So it's, it's the same news delivered. But in yeah. different ways. But a nicer one, approach, yeah. Yeah, right. one, yeah, one is being dismissive approach. and saying, "Hey, guess what? Hey, newsflash, you suck." Uh, the other one is <laughs> saying, "The other one is saying, uh, hey, newsflash, I think you're on the right track, but maybe if you tweaked it a little bit, you might be able to get something better, a better uh, thing out of it." So, mm -hmm. yeah, be kind. Kindness yeah. is, is, yeah. is huge. Sure, of course, for sure, of course. Yep, yep. So. You want to take this one? Yep. Okay. It, it, as we're wrapping up here, are there any words you'd like to say to those watching or listening who have supported your work over the years? What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you know, you're not the only one that said that. What were you thinking? Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 but, like for for example where, where brandon smith was like why do you keep watching yes. this stuff why do you keep watching this stuff right <laughs> why are you, dude, what's wrong with you 
<laughs> there's, 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 there's more stuff out there. Why, there's why, more why, stuff why out there. Why are you my things? That's so weird. Right? <laughs> right. Get a real job, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, seriously, uh, uh, to, to anyone who, who, has, who has enjoyed or has supported or is connected to, to anything that I've been involved with, thank you. Ser- serious and tremendous thanks. Um, My pleasure. For My and, pleasure. and 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 thanks for for reaching out. You know, uh, a lot of times, a lot of times when when you go to a thing, and I've I've been very guilty of this myself. Uh, everyone in the audience will be applauding, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine if everyone in the audience had their arms folded like this and was going, yeah. <laughs> The person on stage has no idea, no idea. Reach out and say, "Hey, that thing that you did, um, it really, it really resonated with me." Or that thing that you did, oh man, I needed, I needed something to say that that everything was going to be okay, even when it felt like everything was was not. Um, so so yeah, uh, uh, make your make your voice heard, make your voice known, and. Um, and I can't say this enough. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Oh gosh. Oh man. Get yourself a fart machine. Um, it's there. You go. That's the one right there. Uh, get yourself a little bit of humor. Get yourself a little bit of something that makes you smile when you're having a terrible day. And and even in this. Like if I'm having the worst day of my life and I'm sitting here feeling sorry for myself and I go over and over and over sooner or later, I'm either going to walk out of the room, join in, or it's going to bring a smile to my face. So find something that brings you joy and use it. It's something healthy, something healthy. Let me, let me, let me just say, because this is just, it's just a fart machine. Um, <laughs> otherwise, I'd, I'd, I'd be, you know, yeah, hot boxing <laughs> in here, and it's not, not a good idea. Um, but um, something healthy that brings you joy, that makes you smile, that's there, or someone that 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 you can talk to when times are hard, when times are tough, somebody that you trust, and someone that whose advice you trust. Um, and uh yeah i can't say that uh loudly enough find joy in in everything there's something as simple as and this i was a gift from a fellow fraggle by the way uh bjb i love you uh thank you so much Uh Uh that is awesome that's awesome and you know since you mentioned you know reaching out you know i even i even i even did a mail stuff to you for for christmas you did you did, yeah. and I showed it to everyone. Oh, I didn't on, even know that. That's on... cool. You did? Yeah, man, it was so great. Uh, oh, I showed it to John, and he, he said, "Oh my gosh, that's so great! It's you." Uh, it was, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I had that's, it up on my, cool. I had it up on my in in my trailer. I had it up on in my trailer, and it's uh, currently in my uh, in my Fraggle, the complete uh, Fraggle guide. Uh, so, oh so yes, gosh, that's, oh, that wow. is awesome. it's in a great place. Oh, that's awesome. That's wonderful. That is that's that's just wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. Even 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 he said even told me that that, that John like likes my work like that, that's that's really awesome. Even he loved it. He loved he loved the the splash and bubbles one. He loved the Fraggle Rock one. It was great. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. Aww. Yes. Yes. Of course. Uh, of course. That's and, awesome. Well, well, for you we're. we're Okay, him and and, we, and I will talk to him about that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You should. Absolutely. You better. Yes. yes. Yeah. You better bring. You better bring that up. Uh, uh, c- c- come on, Jay. You need to bring this up, or you're gonna be in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah, just not, just not yet. Right now, just. Uh... No, but it, but it, but it'll come back to haunt you. So just bring it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so um. It, if people want to connect with you, where can people find you? Uh, so I'm on uh, I'm on the Instagrams. Um, it's oh, yeah, one uh, for your for your um 
You can always use and other ones your art account. yeah yeah so I'm, I'm on i'm on instagram i'm on twitter uh i have my my uh facebook page i also have a uh website uh my site is uh dan garza creative.com um twitter i think it's uh out of o-u-t-t-a-p-e-z yeah. um same thing as as my uh as my twitter and then uh facebook is my my this <laughs> Yep. <laughs> yep and your website and your social media will be in the description down below so people can you awesome. know, connect with you and follow you and everything yes. so, yeah so you know since the next question is the last question and we always ask every single guest chris how might, might as well to end this off here yeah so the, we asked this at the end to all of our guests so of course this podcast is called jake's happy nostalgia show when you think of nostalgia what do you think of, or in your own words, how would you define nostalgia? Oh, man. Nostalgia for me is, is that weird little kid, uh, is that weird little kid walking into that museum and, and knowing that, that stuff is real. Like, like guys, Fraggle Rock is real. Fraggle Rock is a place, and and it's it's there. Um, yes. And we were talking about this on set the other day. For for a new generation, our characters are brand new for a bunch of kids. Some kids right. aren't going to watch the original show. They right. may not have the opportunity to watch it. Yeah. So exposure to it this is going to be their this is going to be their nostalgia in you know in their time um it's it our show is by no means uh erasing any of of the legacy of of what is fraggle rock right absolutely. Uh, yes but but exactly. to another generation this may be the the only thing that they see um and uh and for me that's that's huge that means a lot um Nostalgia for me means uh, a, a warm, safe place to uh, to to laugh and to share and uh, and to and to smile and maybe cry a little bit. You know, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember the watching episodes of, of the original Muppet Show. I, re I remember watching uh, Pinocchio in 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 a movie theater in Mexico for the first time they had these you know kids shows that they would show and watching Pinocchio on the on the giant screen or or um Fantasia night on Bald Mountain um just getting the hell scared out of me mm -hmm. uh the nostalgia in, in in that way too and uh and I think that it's it's important to to remember that and it's like a little it's a little uh, tether it's a tether to your to who you were um and and you 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 know you grow up and you move on and and things things mean different things at this point um but but you know don't lose sight of of what makes you who you are and some of that comes yes. from what you saw you know and what you experienced mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know does that answer the question yeah, yeah, yeah of absolutely. course great words great words absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, Dan, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, we thank you finally, so much, Dan. Glad we were finally able to schedule this and make this happen. It was a blast. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, yeah it's been up. forever. I'm so sorry. I just uh, no, no worries, no, no worries. No, we understand. We understand. No worries. We know because because uh, we went through a similar thing trying to schedule John too. Because yeah, because you know, yeah, you know, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. But but yeah, thank you so much. You know, I'll yes, I'll. And and Jake will uh, contact you, I think, when this uh, goes up. Yes, yes, and I will mm -hmm. send a picture as well. So, and yes. thank you, and thank you so much, Jan, for making it finally happen. I'm glad, you know, you know, us, you know, for three of us, you know, be friends with you for you know for how much you know your work for for a while, and you know, I'm and I'm glad for for your work we, we've done being part of our lives, and you know, keep up your great work and see what's next for you. And we cannot wait for the second season of Back to Rock. Uh, yep. I'm, yes. I'm very excited for that. The first season, the first season is amazing. I feel oh, like the yes. second one would be a great one too. So, yeah. yes. I hope you all enjoy it. It's uh, yeah, we yes. put a lot of we put all of our heart in it, and uh, and yeah, we were thinking about each and every one of y'all as we were doing it. So, Aww. Aww. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it really makes a big difference when you have when you have faces 
uh, attached to the work. So yeah, that's, thanks. That's guys. awesome. Yes, yeah, of, course. of course. And, and to yes. all our viewers and listeners, this brings another episode of Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show to a close. I absolutely enjoyed our time with Dan Garza. Yes, thank you so much, Dan. Hey. It's been a blast. Yes. We've been trying to do it for a while, and my finally get it happen. It's it's, it's it's wonderful. So yes, let's, and, let's catch up more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Keep, more. keep in touch. That sounds great. Keep in touch, yes. and and uh, yes, keep in touch. to, to yes, all of our fans, remember to keep nostalgia alive, and we'll see you more with we'll see you next time with more wonderful interviews. Great more bye. episodes to come. Bye. bye. Keep nostalgia alive, and take care. Pass it on. Next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Take care. See you next time. Thank you for tuning in to another wonderful Jake's Happy Nostalgia Show interview. Be sure to follow Jake and the crew on social media and stream the show wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And as always, remember to keep nostalgia alive. Bye-bye.